Hello, I'm Amara Rosgus with Consulting Specifying Engineer and CFE Media and Technology. I'm excited to do this quick one-on-one -on -one with Vasilis Skardis today. Vasilis is a principal with Salas O'Brien and he has 42 years of experience on a variety of K through 12 higher education and institutional projects. He has extensive experience in planning, programming, and design for renovation and upgrade of existing facilities that are occupied with minimal disturbance to the occupants. Vasilis's experience also includes equipment evaluation and the upgrade, modification, and expansion of HVAC systems to support the adaptive reuse of facilities with specialized knowledge in control systems and in instrumentation. Vasilis, it's great to have you here with us today. Thank you. Amara, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to do this. Um, I'm excited, so shoot away. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I have just a couple of questions. I'd like to give our audience some background on HVAC systems, mechanical systems in school, and what, what the trends are. I mean, are there any trends on these HVAC systems in K through 12 projects right now? Uh, well, to tell you the truth, uh, you know, our industry for many, many years, it was um, really doing the same thing year after year. And I think for the last five years, and obviously with the pandemic situation, lots of things change and uh, lots of new systems, they start being introduced. And the trends are different now than what it was five, 10 years ago. Uh, in a sense, we moved away from the unit ventilator, which was a system very well established for K-12 projects, and which it had restrictions in ventilation requirements and general capacity. Uh, new emphasis now is given to higher degree of ventilation reduction to the space, which is the recommendation of ASHRAE, uh, and, and especially when it relates to the current pandemic situation. Um, increased ventilation dilutes the content of the air in the classroom, and, uh, and, and there are many other ways that you can do that, but obviously more air, fresh air into the classroom helps uh, dilute the process of viruses' presence. Um, also, in trends, uh, we now, we used to have the systems warm up and turning off uh, maybe half an hour, an hour before the school started. Now the recommendation is to start earlier by even two hours earlier before the school is operational and turn off two hours later. And again, the target for this is to make sure that there is plenty of dilution and fresh air introduction into the space. Okay. They, yeah, so to follow up on that topic, um... You know, what modifications are you being asked to make to meet COVID-19 requirements or to help out a particular school meet these new pandemic issues? Yes, um, pre-pandemic, uh, it was the application of the requirements from LEED and LEED uh, back then required the improvement of filtration on the air being introduced into the space. Uh, the COVID-19 process and the pandemic enhanced these requirements. And uh, we now absolutely need to provide filters that there will be MER 13 or even 14. Uh, we also require to, whenever the budget uh, allows, to introduce UVC lights into the air handling unit, clean the coil and clean the air coming into the space. And, and in general, uh, we try to improve the air, the cleanliness of the air coming into the space. Okay, okay, that sounds terrific. Um, just shifting gears a little bit here, We're talking about new technologies, new trends, what are engineers doing to ensure projects, whether it's a new project or a retrofit, meets the challenges of emerging technologies? Yes, um, in existing structures, we make sure that we create a matrix of options associated with the cost of the solution. 
uh, while money should not be a problem when we design it for the health of our students, the reality remains that the given budget must be met. In most instances, we try to calculate the ability of the existing units or building to handle higher ventilation airflows. In other cases, we provide doors units as rooftop units installations to introduce treated, pre-treated fresh air into the space coupled with VRV systems, cassettes, uh, fine coil units, things of this nature. In other words, we don't have the traditional VAV system that was there before, but now we creating a fresh air unit, the doors, which is dedicated outside the air system, uh, coupled with uh, another system that uh, handles the uh, loading of, uh, of a sensible load of the building, like the people inside the equipment, things like that. Um, there are many new emerging technologies, one of them being needle point ionization. Uh, this is a little generator that you can put inside the uh, supply duct of their hundred unit and generates ions, which uh, when they meet the viruses into the space, uh, they, they dissolve them and they, they make them bigger in sense that the filter can capture them and remove them for the space. Uh, needle boy ionization, it's a, a preferred system to me personally, because there is also bipolar ionization. Uh, but uh, the needle point uh, handles both uh, viruses that they remain into the space, as well as viruses that they rested on furniture. So with one uh, measure, you're killing both elements, the airborne stuff and the ones that they're resting on furniture and corners of the walls. Okay, yeah, that's some pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, so kind of looking ahead a little bit, what should mechanical engineers or others responsible for HVAC systems consider when designing or retrofitting in schools in particular? They, they need to, uh, as I mentioned, they need to make a matrix of, of what is the available options and, and what is uh, fitted for the particular school because it's not one size fits all. Uh, depending where the school is uh, uh, located, let's say if it is in an area of heavy industrial you know, production, maybe a, a lot of outside fresh air might not be the good thing for the school. And we should concentrate more in filtration and ionization on things of this nature. Um, if a school is in a setting that is in the rural areas of the city with a lot of trees and everything else, increasing the ventilation will be very good for the school. Uh, so like everything else that is happening now with the labor and the new engineers, we need to be uh, careful that you finish school that doesn't mean that for the next of your life, you're going to have a, a, a job security. You need to keep yourself abreast with all the technology, whatever the new uh, systems that are coming out uh, and they're available, you need to know how to utilize them and more importantly, where to utilize them on a situation like a new school or an existing school. So I expect them to go through a lot of mentorship with older engineers and, and really find out how they're going to apply these new technologies into an existing or a new school. Okay, okay, cool. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time today. I've been speaking with Vasilis Skardis about schools and that's it for now. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.